Hey, what's going on? Welcome to another episode of Angular Air. I'm your host, Justin Schwarzenberger. And today we are going to be learning about how to learn without a teacher. Should be awesome as usual. So let's get into it. Our panelists joining us today, we've got Alyssa with us. Alyssa, what's going on? Hey, guys. And we got Bonnie. Bonnie, how are you doing? I'm good. How are you? Doing great. Doing great. We got Mike with us. Mike, hey, what's going on? Not too much. Feel pretty good. Uh, ready to chat about something a little bit uh, non-tactical, which is great. Yes, yes. A little bit of soft skills, a little bit of non-tech, but tech too. It should be pretty awesome. Our guest joining us today, Samantha Rhodes. Samantha, how's it going? Is it Sam, Sam Samantha? What do you prefer? I answer to all of it. Okay. <laughs> so all of it. Nice. Thanks for joining us today. How are you doing? <laughs> Hi, I am a junior developer. I'm working on an awesome, awesome project called TransTrax with Keith and my mom, which is really great. They're awesome to work with. In about a week, I'm going to Florida, and my mom and I are going to speak at Angular Mix, not Angular Air, Angular Mix. And I just finished the ThoughtRam Angular Masterclass, which was really, really awesome, and I feel like I have tripled my skills as an Angular developer. So that's pretty cool. So that's that's what I'm doing right now, plus high school. So. Nice. Oh, by saying. the way, yeah, yeah, I'm in high school. school. You're amazing. She's also presenting <laughs> with me. So, so wait a second. Who's your mom? Um, I'm not sure. What? 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 She, she doesn't, sure. You, don't you don't have, have a book. bar. You have nothing. You have no name. It's just a picture of you. I don't know Bonnie, what to call you. Wonder. I love it. There you go. Yeah. All yeah, right, so you uh, like it. <laughs> and, and both of you are speaking at Angular Mix coming up. Yes. Mm -hmm. And what's that topic on? Mine is Angular animations. That's the one I'm doing by myself. And then together we are speaking about GraphQL. GraphQL. Very nice. Pretty exciting. Very nice. Yes. And you mentioned the ThoughtRam uh, workshop that you guys did. And yes. that was pretty awesome. We heard a lot about that. That was the one in Houston. Yeah. ThoughtRam, our Angular training will explode your brain. <laughs> is that really what it says? That's yeah, awesome. That, that's really what it says. <laughs> How long was the like workshop? That. Was it like four days? Four days. Four okay. Days. Like all day kind of thing or just like part days? Uh, from nine to about five, I think. Okay. It was so intense. It was. I literally slept like for intense? about an entire day after. Good intense. It was amazing. It was really awesome. Okay. It's like they're ramming thoughts into your brain forcefully. <laughs> and Thomas <laughs> Burleson is no, a taskmaster. This is really he doesn't sound forward. as good as we want. Maybe we could have a like a more pleasant. <laughs> it, it was. I mean, it was really cool. It was. It was a great experience because. Uh, we learned so much, and there was some stuff that, like, I thought I was pretty good with RxJS, and I learned so much um, that it was, it was very, uh, it was a lot. It was a lot of material, and it was really a good experience. But it was like they're not messing around. Like you have to learn this and this and this, and let's go, let's go. It was. Did cool. they have like a prep stuff for you guys to do before you went, or no? Was it? Was there anything like make sure you download this stuff, or not really? Yeah, so yeah, it was pretty standard. It was like you need to have NPM on your system and, and that kind of thing. Yeah. Well, very cool. Congrats on both of you for talking at the mix. <laughs> so with that, so that thought round training was learning with a teacher, correct? Yes. So how does that segue into learning without a teacher? <laughs> Mike bringing us back on topic. <laughs> homeschooling. I've got about a year of homeschooling up my sleeve. That plus, I mean, when I was about nine years old, I made a website full of kittens, pink kittens. Everything was pink and everything had kittens because I was grounded and that was the only thing I was allowed to do. Thank you, <laughs> mom, the developer. Parenting. And I learned from Codecademy, but does anybody, is, are you guys familiar with Codecademy? Dude, yes. Yeah, I actually well, I think I used Codecademy before they were Codecademy. They had like a previous name, but yes, I totally Yeah, agree. well, that's where I learned HTML and CSS, and it it helped you a lot. It There was, you know, kind of a teacher, but at the same time, there were a lot of skills that I learned from doing that and also from my 
lovely mother who taught me a lot of things. When I get stuck, instead of just coming straight to her because she's very busy, she taught me some things to try first. Okay, I would I love running to hear to her. this list. I so, am so excited. And I, when I first started, I actually started my uh, uh, web development in Joomla. Y'all know Joomla? Yeah. Joomla was was years ago. And I had somebody that kind of ran me through the basics. And then I would come back to him and ask him questions. And the first and at the first time, he was pretty patient. He helped me. And the second time, he was like, did you even Google this? And I was like, oh. <laughs> oh spoilers. Spoilers. Yeah, sorry. Spoilers. Okay, sorry, 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 sorry. <laughs> so anyway, so when Samantha was doing her first, when she first started HTML and CSS and when she first started Angular, what I would say to her is come to me if you get stuck, but I'm not going to sit here and spoon feed everything to you. Like you have to go and figure it out. And then if you get stuck, I'll help you. But I'm not going to just, you know, nobody taught me. I learned, I learned Angular back in 2013. There was no, <laughs> nothing on plural site. So no a bit of quality. tough love there. <laughs> yeah. I love it though. Google it. Google it. <laughs> So yeah, do you have slides for us? I'm so excited. I do. I do. You guys ready? Yes. I'm yes. jealous to those of you who have learned to develop after Google was uh, a thing. I remember oh, wait. Cody what did you do before Google. Google was a thing? Yeah. Seriously, oh, I when I was little, uh, I walked uphill uh, both ways in the snow. <laughs> yeah, carry carrying your desktop computer and the CRT <laughs> monitor. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Absolutely. Yeah. I started working <laughs> professionally back in 1999. And yeah, when did Google come out? 2003, four? Sam, oh. you and your mom are always doing things. And like, we are. I'm like doing things, but just like not as much. And I like am so exhausted. Where does all your time come from? <laughs> I don't sleep very often. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Lots of coffee. You don't understand how much coffee we go through in this house. <laughs> so much coffee. Okay, you guys ready? We are ready. It's gonna be great. I think so. It's gonna okay. be great. Okay. Do you want to explain the, the the oh. trick of your uh, to see if the panelists read? Okay, right. so this is a trivia hunt or trivia <laughs> trivia treasure hunt kind of thing. I'm gonna ask questions. The answers are in my article. So, if you have not read my article, it's going to be very obvious very quick. Okay, <laughs> are we ready? I think we're ready. So, just, just to be clear right now, I, I threw the link to the article up in the live chat for our YouTube channel right now. So, hopefully, it's up there. So, anybody watching awesome. right now can get that there. Awesome. Anybody who watches this later, uh, they'll have to check Twitter or something for that. Yes. Uh, I wish they could see Mike sweating and pulling up the article really fast. <laughs> <laughs> I, I got a link to the article 18 minutes ago. <laughs> well, you I, if I remember correctly, you retweeted it when I first published it. So, so you must have read it. Exactly. You wouldn't retweet an article you Everything had Everything you retweet, you always read. <laughs> exactly. Exactly. I read it then. <laughs> I only published it like a month ago. All right. All right. So it's... So the article is called How to Learn Without a Teacher, just like your title slide right here, right? Yes. And it's by you, yes. and it's on Medium. So yes, there's some clues for the viewers that are watching this that don't have the link. They can yes. find, out how to find it. Google it. Yep. There we go. All right, let's do it. OK. Question one. Drum roll, please. <laughs> when you are on your own researching or learning more about something and do not have the answer, what is the first resource you should check? Google. Bing. <laughs> I'm, I'm dinging in. Yay! I'm dinging in. Or if you you're like really, really, really weird, that one duck, duck, go site. <laughs> but one of our viewers, Rob and myself, we, we pick books. We look for books. Oh, Encyclopedia well, Britannica, cool? you guys. <laughs> yeah. But that's, did you literally like a physical hard book or like an ebook? That you yeah, I remember search? those things with the bindings and like no. paper. And no. And find one on the shelf, look it up. Well, that hey, actually that's... was the best resource when I first started learning. Uh, we didn't have as much on online, and there were some really good books when I was back when I was learning Joomla and Ruby on Rails, too. Yeah, books would work. That's but good answer, Rob. Google, you see, it's just, it's, it's always, you know, yeah. So, okay, question two. Drum roll. When Googling, 
how can you keep your results most closely related to what you're searching for? Oh, I know, I know, I know. Search for Angular 2, all one word. <laughs> um, <laughs> not exactly. You're on the right path, kind of. Um, I got it. What? what is it, Rocky? You, you restrict your results based off of the time when it was published. Yes. Ding, 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 ding. Oh. And you search for it using your search tools. Okay. Wait, so, wait, wait. Do we do we need to tell everybody what that graphic was uh, from right there? Because that's pretty old right there. There's, there's a combo <laughs> thing we got a little bit of. So yeah. Do, when I was when I was Batman, searching for a like GIF, it. I did not restrict my time. <laughs> <laughs> Obviously. Wow. Way to Obviously. be relevant. That was hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> so just to clarify for anybody who hasn't used that before, if you're doing a Google search and you look just under the search bar, there's a little thing called tools and you can search and when you click that you have a little drop down and you can restrict it to the past year, which I always recommend, especially when you're looking for Angular stuff. Yes, and that there's a screenshot of exactly how to do that in my article right underneath this tip. Very hard to miss. I should read that article. Huh. <laughs> that might be hey, nice. Hey, I got a question about that really quick because I use that. And uh -huh. I kind of go back and forth between what it is. Isn't there like a, uh, let's see, a month? I can do it like all the way down to a month. Yeah, the past, past yeah. week, past month, and past year, right? Yes. Uh, you and, can do past uh, hour. What? Yes. Yeah, oh, past yeah. hour, past 24 hours, Dang. past week, month, year. Yep. Or custom. So, uh, so like you mentioned, I usually do that around the past year, but sometimes I go shorter than that. But then I was wondering, too, like past year, that's a little confusing. Like if it's January, am I actually getting a full year's worth of time? Surely know. it's the last 12 months. Yes, yeah, it is the, last, too, is the last 12 months. So... That brings us to our third question, which is, why is it good to use the search tools? Why do you want the most recent answers? Ooh, ooh, ooh. Okay, so this one time, aka yesterday, I started this one <laughs> tutorial, and uh, I got like halfway through it, and I was getting these errors, and I was like, what the garbage? And I like went and checked the repo that was like, you know, going along with the tutorial, and it uh -huh. was like over a year ago, and like the code had changed. Right, since so. Then. <laughs> So I, I, I don't need I don't need workarounds for IE six. <laughs> <laughs> so the answer is constant updates. That is why you can't look for things you know three years ago because obviously the code has changed and has been updated since then, at least in Angular. So we've got updates, lots and lots of updates. And not even Angular. The, yeah. I think it's just web development in general. Yeah. Yeah, I think I think hey. it's contextual, right? Like, especially when we're talking yes. like front end development, these are things that move quickly and move fast, right? Um, but yes. say you're looking for a design pattern or something like that, like it, those sort of things that have been around for a while. That that search, you might actually be, you know, okay, I can look for something that's maybe spanning a longer time, depending on what you're looking for, right? Now, if you're right. looking for say a design pattern within the scope of front end development, then yeah, you're probably going to want to look for the the latest. But there is some things that like kind of have been around for a while that you may want to do, but I, I definitely agree. Like for the most part, in front end development stuff, you you, you want to have fresher stuff because you're probably going to end up with the best. <laughs> yes. Well, that and once you like start doing like tutorials or start looking things up, you usually find like people who you trust, like whether they're websites or like own like people's personal art, like articles and blog posts that you're like, hey, I'm going to check with them first. Because like last time they really helped me out, kind of thing. Or but, anything with Justin's right. name on it. <laughs> <laughs> Who is this Justin you talk about? There's a lot of Justin. Who is this Justin? Justin Searles. Uh. Only when it comes to testing. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Right up there. The question Wait. five. Oh, okay. Wait, what? Wait, what happened? Where's question four. Oh no. Oh. My good. Okay, you know what? That is for her to know and you to find out. Oh. Okay. Oh, question you four. You question four. You know, I was like, I put a question four in there, and then I was like, none of these people have read my article. So I just decided question four was just, it was, it was a little. We've much. just automatically gotten that one wrong. I got you it. Yes. <laughs> you did not get question four right. I just assumed. It would not be right. <laughs> I love it. I love it. What's five? <laughs> question 
five, why is Googling a good skill to have? Now, this is not in the article, but based on the past answers and your knowledge of life, why do you think that being able to Google something and finding an answer is a good skill to have? I know. Take it away. Because, because Google could be my teacher. Um, or, pro, uh, pro, or get uh, me to content that could suffice as lessons that would supplant a teacher. That, I mean, depending yes, on that, how fast your Googling skills are, basically the whole internet is like your brain, right? Somebody <laughs> asks you a question on Slack and you're like, give me one moment. And then you answer that was, it. Th that was deep. <laughs> Rob Google says it's easier is than my thinking. brain. <laughs> Google is easier my brain. Than thinking. <laughs> Millennials. <laughs> so what's Hold the my answer, Sato? <laughs> okay. <laughs> the answer is when you are Googling and you are, you know, phrasing these questions, it will help you make your questions as efficient and precise as possible when talking to actual people. Does that make that sense? That is slick. That's yep. what I was going to say. Yep. Then yeah. Why didn't you say it? Yeah, hop on. You hop on. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, when you're Googling things, and sometimes you won't find the exact answer, but after, if you don't have a teacher, you're probably going to be Googling or using books a lot. And I'm being just like able trying to, to imagine somebody like going through like the back of a book. <laughs> yeah. What is that thing called? That index. has like, yeah, index. going through their index, like looking up an answer. <laughs> yeah. I actually used to do that in class. It was miserable. Oh my god! It's actually a good point because, especially when I first started in development, I did like I didn't know any of the terminology, right? And like nowadays, we can say like we want to input um, <clears throat> event emitters, right? I want to Google event emitters, or I want to Google, um, you know, uh, you know, something specific. Like if you don't know the terminology and you're trying to do something, like I'm trying to pass something from one component to another. Right? How do I even say that? And and if I don't know what it's called, it's it, it, when I was like first starting out, that was actually really difficult because I and didn't not know this like terminology, but just the phrasing. Because like you can have two different people search for like the same like event emitters, for instance, but the way that they word what they're searching for, one would find a really awesome article and one wouldn't. So I think yeah, she's totally exactly. right. It's just it's a good skill of just like wording, I guess. Oh yes, I love him. <laughs> yeah. So, so it mean, will. That's a really good point and that the idea of knowing how to phrase your searches is a way to find results faster, almost like when you went to the library or when you go to the library to know the Dewey Decimal System. It helps you to be able to get to what you need faster. We were actually yeah. tested on this in college when I went to web, like school for web dev. We had a class where we had to Google certain things and he knew if you Googled it like correctly, you'd get this many results. So you had to turn in screenshots of your searches and like get graded based off of that. Like legitimately yeah. Googling was something I was taught in college. <laughs> and yeah, for sure. And that was uh, definitely on the list of things that my mom would make me do before I came to her. She would go, how, how, many, th how many articles did you read about this before you came and asked me about it? Like, just stuff like that. Like, this is definitely, Googling is definitely a very, very good skill to have. Not really only just for your wife. I have no sympathy because I learned back, like, I taught myself this back in, you know, years ago. And, and, and I didn't have any plural site back then. So, I, if I can do it. <laughs> I, I, really, I really like this point because, it, you know, one of the challenges that we have when searching for things is what we're just talking about here, right? Which is like how do you phrase it? How do you term it? How do you describe what it is you're searching for when you don't know what that is? And that's a challenge that we face right now in Googling stuff for tech uh, is that sometimes we hit that wall and we're like, I, I don't know what the term is. I know what it is that I'm trying to accomplish, but I don't know how to phrase it to find the right results. And so that's where like the human interaction comes into play at that point, right? Which is really helpful, which is you know, I want to describe it to somebody and somebody else can say, oh, I know exactly what you're talking about. It's event emitters, Google event emitters, and you'll be there, right? Um, but but from this, because you have to deal with this and, and, and handle this, it does, like you said, Sam, get you trained to start thinking about it's important of how I phrase it in order to find the right results of, of what I'm looking for. Um, that's not only good for when you're searching for the material, but also when you play that role of somebody else says, hey, how do I... Um, broker out you know an, an action from a component or whatever and now right. you can say i can talk about that i can explain what that concept is it's more than just knowing how to do it but it is 
the, the lexicon around the discussion of tech, right? And it's something that, that we all need to build. And especially when you're on your own and you're not really working with a team, you don't get an opportunity to talk tech as much. You're typing a lot, but you're not verbally talking it. So it all kind of compounds in the same thing of, of building up your personal skill set because you're, you're adding the ability to explain what this concept is and give it terminology and that sort of thing. So definitely. especially because uh, most developers are on a team and they are working with other people and some of the code, like I'm working on this project with my mom and Keith and sometimes I have questions about their code but I'm not exactly sure how to explain what I want to know or if I want to do something, there's this really awesome function that I want to write but I'm not exactly sure how to go about writing it. Like I know in my brain what it's supposed to look like but I can't put it into words like I can't explain how I want this to move across the screen. Do you so. ever have those conversations where you start though like even though you have no words you're like so you know that thingy that you're doing over there I'd <laughs> like to try that but in a more kerjiggered way and then people just look at you like I've tried yeah. without yeah. the word. It doesn't, I was going to say, say I have this problem all the time. <laughs> I, like yeah. I have a function that I want to write but I don't know how. Yeah that <laughs> happened yesterday. <laughs> What do you do? Do you just start writing? <laughs> yeah. What? And just, that's a, just gotta start that's somewhere. A good, that's the good thing about Google, right? Is that they're not gonna Google's not gonna look at you weird like what the heck are you asking? It's just gonna Google give you will never something, judge so. you. Yeah, it never judges you, right? Google will never judge you. <laughs> Except for okay. whenever you get zero results. That I feel like is pretty big judgment. <laughs> a little bit. Okay, question six. What is the best thing to do when you're learning something difficult? Cry? Uh, that's uh, that's after after a while. That's, after, <laughs> that's, just, you know, that's, that's an ongoing you're thing. Something really confusing. Oh, take notes! Take notes! Yay! <laughs> Every time you see something interesting, you write it down. Every time you see something that you're not like, if you the the thing I have problems with is when. I don't understand something, it's hard for me to take notes on it. It's hard for me to write something down that will help me remember it later if I don't know what it means now, you know? So that's, it is kind of difficult, but what I have found is I have two different colored pins. I have a pink pin for my notes and a blue pin for my questions. That, no, that's like actually, those are actually the colored pins that I use. Pink pins for notes She's being and... Serious, which is funny. No, I'm being serious. And blue pins for questions. And when I'm not sure what I mean, I just try to write as fast as possible with my blue pin and later I will go back and ask the instructor or Google, since we've learned how to state these questions nicely and in a way that gets us results. So it is very, very good to take notes, not only so, to, oh, wait, no, that's the next question. I can't say that. Okay. I used to be very, like, note-driven as well as far as, like, written ones, but I, like, mm -hmm. forced myself to switch over to, like, the notes app on Mac, and I'm, mm -hmm. like, so thankful because now it's all searchable. <laughs> that's a, yes, that's exactly what I did. Last year when I was um, taking, when I first started homeschooling, I was taking all, I literally got an entire notebook filled up with notes from one class. Like I took over 50 pages of notes for one semester and it was ridiculous. And when I took the test, yeah, I vaguely remembered it, but at the same time, I couldn't find anything. Like I know I wrote this down somewhere, but I cannot find it in these 50 pages. <laughs> so when you do it on you know, the computer digitally, you can search it. And that is very good. I personally do that now. But at the same time, when I'm doing technical things, I always write it down because that will help you remember it. So Yeah, I also do, like, if I ever come across bugs, I'll actually, like, even if they're, like, you know, once in terminal or something, I'll copy-paste them. And then once I find the answer, I'll, like, type it out. And that way, if I ever run across that same error again, I search for it because my memory yeah. sucks. Oh, my god. That's gosh. actually a really good point. Yeah, I do that a lot. It's it's really, I, actually, I think 80% of my notes are errors I've ran across before. <laughs> I actually ran across an error yesterday, and I was like, I have seen this error message before. Where have I seen this before? I fix, I've fixed this before. And then I'm sitting there, and I'm like, I don't know what's going on. I know I have had this problem before, and I know I have successfully fixed it. But now I have no idea how to fix it. So that is actually a really <laughs> good point that I did not think of. Keeping the Wait, error message... 
I think taking notes can also help you pay attention. Like if it's during a live lecture or even yeah, if you're like watching sure. a video online, I get distracted like really easily. So it's taking notes easy. is my way of being like, did, did you get the next point? Oh no, I didn't. Yeah. You better rewind or something. So it's very easy I, to uh, get distracted and get like off topic when you're learning about something really confusing and it's very <laughs> complex. It's very easy to uh, let yourself go focus on something that's a little more easy. And it's not always a good thing, especially during Angular Masterclass when you've got four days and then it's over. <laughs> and you really got to pay attention. So uh, I love it when you find a, a blog post six months later or a year later that you wrote. <laughs> oh my gosh, that answers your question? <laughs> yes. yes. <laughs> I feel so embarrassed because I've actually read my own words before. And I was like, oh, that's a good idea. Like, I've actually thought that before. <laughs> Oh God! What's wrong with us? <laughs> that, that's a good point about the blog post. Is that it? You know, it's one of the good reasons why to why to write blog posts, right? Is to take something that you didn't know and you figured out how to do and catalog it and put it out there, not only for other people but also for your use, as well as for you to give that opportunity to get a better understanding of it when you have to explain it, right? And um, I think you'd be surprised, it. even if it's like in your own layman's terms, how helpful it can be to some other people who are like in that same spot. So. Exactly. Even if you think this is going to help no one, I, I still think it's a good practice to just publish it anyways. Press publish. Just send it out there in the ether. <laughs> and, and put a date on it so that we can use the search <laughs> yeah. tools to yeah. filter it out when it gets too old, right? Yeah. Make sure you date those blog posts. Hey, so, okay, so analog notes, right? Piece of paper, uh, the notes tool yeah. in uh, on Mac. Anything else that anybody uses to take notes digitally or anything like that that we can recommend? Mom. Well, I use Evernote, but there. This is a continuing theme because her next slide ties right into this too. Oh, All right, sweet. I have, it does. I have okay. I have one other technique to uh, commit it to memory. Is that if I find something interesting, especially like tech related, as I'm trying to find an answer, I like to play with it. Whether or not I'm reading about animations, maybe I'll just go and quick create a plunker or something like that to play with animations. Because if I use something, I'm more likely to remember it than just reading about it. Definitely. Yeah. Absolutely. I, I completely agree with that, Mike. Yeah. I, I and can't. I am such a fan of like plunkers or code bins because it's so, there's no overhead, right? Like there's no commitment yeah. of like, I am in this project for life. Like you could just go do make something like an animation. Refresh. Like, <laughs> don't forget the uh -huh. stack. <laughs> or, yeah, yeah, I don't or really feel stack like I've, I don't really oh, feel I like I've learned list. something until I've done it myself. Like I can't just watch and go, okay, yeah, I can do that. I have to do it myself before I really feel like I've mastered anything. Did you guys say stack list? Okay, stack list. That was a couple saying. weeks ago. I'll, I'll send you a link. You type it. You type it out. Okay. Question seven. How does taking notes help you? Why do you take notes? Like uh, written notes or notes in general? So, so that I don't have to pay attention. I can just offload it for later. <laughs> Well, um, asynchronous lear learning. I love it. <laughs> <laughs> is it like the, the remembering thing we talked about? Or is it the, uh, the staying focused thing that we talked about? Or is it well, neither of those things? The act of writing helps solidify the knowledge of the subject, and it will help you remember it longer. So like that error message, uh, when you write it down, you know I have solved this before. I mean, you haven't looked it up or anything yet, but seeing the error message, you've written it down, you've taken the time, you've solved it, and it's it. You understand how to solve, how to fix it again because you've written it down before. You remember, and I know that your, you know, your memory is not that great, but you will remember that you have ran into this problem before, and you will go check your errors. You know what's crazy is the whole writing it down in a notebook. Uh, I learned this from my husband when we when we first started dating, and I actually argued with him because he <laughs> said, "When you're learning this, you need to just get keep a spiral next to your desk all the time and write stuff down." And I was like, "Honey, I, I appreciate your help, but I'm not. I'm never going to go back and read that. I know, and, and I'm never." And he said, "And this is the part that really was weird for me." He said, "That's okay." Even yeah. if you never look at that again, even if you burn the spiral when it's full and get a new one, just the act of writing it with a pen will actually help you remember it. And honestly, and I was like, whatever, but I found <laughs> it to be true. And yeah. I started doing it. And now I and I go through spirals like crazy. And now half the time I will never she go does. back and read that. But especially well, and it's if the I'm same thing here. Cause like I know I try to like go digital, but now I'm kind of getting a hang of like, 
I'm gonna want this later, so I need to type it out or I need to like transfer it from the spiral. But it's the same thing. I, I still have like the spiral notebook next to my desk, right? Because I I can't get rid of the writing part of it. I would love to. I've actually asked friends before. Can we like ever replace you know the act of writing with an app? Like, but I don't actually, know. Actually, there's an actually really really cool thing where it's a pin and it goes with this pad and you write it out and it's there you write it with your hand but it transfers those notes to the computer so you have those notes in your computer and on a piece of paper i heard so you know the notes app on the mac like if you use it on your ipad i've heard they added that feature where like That's you can use a dominic stylus we have dominic elm in the chat hi dominic because we love dominic and he just said he just he just got an ipad actually when he was here in houston um, and he uses the iPad plus pencil to create sketch notes, which is like perfect because then you're writing it with your hand, which helps you remember it, but then it's also searchable. So, yes. That's awesome. That's awesome. Now we all That's need iPads. Right. Yeah, that's living the dream right there. I want to do that. I know. And for the, us other nubs, we all just have to type out our notes. <laughs> well, and if you don't have a spare iPad laying around, the spiral, I think, really does... It, especially when you're learning something really confusing, you have it like you write it. Like, like when I was watching uh, Pluralsight videos uh, or Lynda.com videos or whatever, I'll like write the code and then when I finish the video, I'll go type it. If it's something really confusing, like I'll yeah. write it all, I'll actually write the code and then copy it from oh, my note. Oh, funny. You'd write the code out? I just try to write like higher level, like you're going to write code that does this thing and then later on I make myself relook it up. Because I only I don't, do that when I have no idea what they're talking about. Like I like oh. I really I cannot understand. I can't wrap my head around a brand new concept, and it's really complicated. I just feel like it's way over my head. I literally will because normally I'll have the, the the video on one screen and my code on the other screen, and I'll follow along like that. But I do nice. that extra step of writing it in between if I if it's really like I don't get it, and then and but and it's really helpful. But that's like for like the advanced topics. <laughs> <laughs> now so I'm like really curious, totally different podcast, but I want to know what an advanced topic is for Bonnie. Like what, yeah, I don't wanna, what is yes. it? That's <laughs> I mean, sometimes, yeah, yeah, no, yeah. Some, <laughs> some things are hard for me at first. And then I go back, I go around later and I'm like, well, like first, when I first started learning Apollo and GraphQL, that was an advanced topic for me. And I'm going to go to Angular Mix and make it look super easy. Oh, but when great. I first saw it, I was like, I know it's really cool. But I could not explain to you what Uri just said at all. <laughs> <laughs> so this next one is really fun. I'm serious. It's really, really fun. I'm, I'm gonna, ready for it. You're going to have fun. What is another great way to remember complicated things? It's really fun. That's a hint. It's really fun. Okay. The really fun way. I mean, you said that asking for help isn't fun so it can't be that one no so uh, not yet i like i like to uh teach it to my dog once i learn it so i sit <laughs> right next to me uh, wait seriously like i can't tell I you want to that video. i know right like really we didn't make it to that slide yet <laughs> i'm like bro this is how you uh reduce this state so you're, down you're teaching your dog like you're pretending he's the rubber duck kind of thing Guys, spoilers. yeah, but he's a dog. <laughs> Red, I'm throwing flags over here. You can't see me, but I'm. I think they're, they want to do. They want to do question nine, but we're on question. I'm sorry. Eight. I'm sorry. Okay, I'm focused. Uh, that comes. It's fun. And super it's not goofy. teaching others. It's super goofy. Just think, every good boy does math. What is that? No, it's like a, for learning the scales. Are we learning music today? <laughs> every good boy does fine. Every or every good boy, good boy deserves fine. fine. Oh, are you talking about an acronym? No, like, okay, Mom, why don't, you, acronym? why don't you help him out here? <laughs> okay, it's, she's talking about mnemonic devices, and actually what we did is we, she was having, well, you should tell him the story. Yeah. A song, yay, I she love making She was having some songs. problems with uh, chemistry. Yeah, huh? And I and I was trying to help her, but I'm I like I don't know chemistry. That was I mean I got I got good grades in high school, but that was a long time ago. And so I I went and I YouTubed it, and I found this like super goofy song oh about yes. whatever unit she was learning in chemistry, and I taught it to her, and she thought I was ridiculous. I but, love it. <laughs> I passed the test. 
Yeah. So that's and what she matters. was sitting and, and I did the same thing in college actually. And it seems really goofy at the time when you're studying, you're like, this is really stupid. But when I did, I, I took uh, biology in college and there were a hundred questions just on the frog dissection alone. And we actually did come up with really stupid little songs and rhymes and believe it or not sitting in that final exam that it worked it actually worked it's stupid but it works it does. I actually i've done little things like that so like one time i made up a song to help my friend remember my phone number <laughs> yeah but no wait wait wait, I love wait, wait, wait. is it is it eight six seven five three oh nine <laughs> No, it was totally like a custom ditty, man. You'd be proud. You'd be proud. <laughs> Why don't you sing it for us and then we can all call you after the show? Yes. Oh, God. I was like, do watching. we want to do that? <laughs> oh, do you guys have an Angular song or any like song that you created recently for code? Give do me we? 10 minutes no. and I'll Google it. With oh. Search tools. <laughs> And I'll give back Just to you. Just make sure to include Shai Resnick in that in that in those search oh, terms. God. Yes. You know, we Sam, have remember how I had you do the like good morning thing yeah. like on stage with me beforehand? Yeah. I like learned in speaker class, like in Poland, they were talking about how, you know, it's a really good thing if you can get your audience up and moving, you know, it, it just like really helps with yeah. engagement and interview level during the whole talk. And I was like, thanks, Sam, because I was thinking back to that. <laughs> but it reminds me of that because we were singing a little song on stage and we made everyone do it with us. So, yeah, <laughs> I think everyone should just be able to let go of their like serious developer side and make a dev song. Like, especially at conferences, seriously. like you're there. Most people like. I mean, NGConf last year was my very first conference, and I was, like, I mean, I didn't really know anybody there. I knew who my mom introduced me to, but other than that, I pretty much knew nobody. So it was, it's really cool, like, when people are just, like, goofy and silly, and, like, they're there to, you know, meet new people in the community and make connections, and, you know, if you get stuck, you know who to go to. So, yeah, I think that... Songs are great in every aspect of life. I think you should just sing a song about everything. Like, don't talk. Just sing. Just sing. <laughs> Next week's episode. <laughs> Next week's episode. Oh, my goodness. You think we can actually pull off a singing episode of Angular Air? <laughs> Angular Air, musical edition. The, the Angular Air, the musical. I like it. We need to invite <laughs> Tracy Lee. Yeah. She could help us with that project. Yep. And shy for sure, and frosty. Yeah, yeah, shy. And actually, you know who? The, the best, if we're gonna be singing, we need Jeff Welpley. Oh, for his his vocals. Oh yeah. If you've heard his uh, Sweet Caroline stylings, I think, or that was the business guys. But Jeff Welpley is great on karaoke. I love it. Oh, okay. question nine. nine. I'm so ready. He's the piano man. Are you ready for this, you guys? Yes. Yes. What do, do you do after you bang your head against a wall and googling gets you nowhere? Now we can cry. Yeah. You go to Slack. Go, go ask your mom. <laughs> well, mom. <laughs> that, that works for me, but uh, maybe not other people. Can we all just go ask Bonnie? Yeah, sure. <laughs> She's not busy enough. <laughs> ask for help. She's not busy enough. I love it. <laughs> so... Asking, if this is what I was talking about at the conferences and stuff, making uh, acquaintances and stuff and just being really, you know, open and energetic. You, after that conference, you go back to those people and you're like, hey, I need help. And okay, but this is great for you, but what, but uh, my mom doesn't know Angular. What, what am I supposed to do if I've never been to a conference and I don't know anybody? Cause this is actually, I lived through this. I didn't know anyone else who was using so Angular. If you, if you don't have a mom that teaches Angular, which I don't know who <laughs> doesn't have a mom that your life's decisions at this point, like why don't you have a mom that teaches Angular? Yeah. Why right? don't you have an Angular teaching mom? That's just but weird. After that, just, after I thought that. everybody had, I thought everybody had an Angular teaching mom, but uh, I don't know, man. So, what you do, if you've never been to a conference, you don't have anybody around you who knows, guess what you do? You Google it. And if you don't find your answer, you find a related answer, and maybe you ask the person, like, if you find an answer on Stack Overflow that's not exactly what you're looking for, it doesn't fix your problem, but it's closely related to what you're doing, 
you can ask that person. Or Twitter is a really great resource. Oh, yes. There's a lot of people posting articles. There are a lot of people posting technical questions on Twitter. And I see them, I see them every single day. People asking technical questions on Twitter and actually getting answers. I know Brocky uh, was asked... Brocky posted something and somebody replied with a question. I think it was Rob Hegelson replied with a question and he got an answer from the Mike Brocky. <laughs> so, I, probably say, I Google, just like message sure him and text him right. and I say, Mike, this doesn't make sense. So, you know, maybe if you can get that hook up. <laughs> yeah, that, so, that's something that, uh, that I like to advocate and stuff is that, you know, look, everybody is doing development stuff. It, it's valuable to be on Twitter, at least to be watching Twitter and to find yeah. stuff that comes through there, right? You don't have to be interacting, you have to be that stuff. But, but there's a good amount of information that you can gain from there. And, and it's things like terminologies that's flying through the feed on, on Angular topics, right? Um, mm -hmm. Information about upcoming um, uh, conferences and uh, local user groups and things like that. Any these sources where you can make these connections, right, or, or can get this information, and and it's just another way without having to do much on your own. You you know you you just monitor Angular, monitor these terms, and then you get stuff delivered to you versus a search, right? So it's it's definitely a valuable yeah. place to well, aggregate. I think you're saying if you've never been to a conference and you don't have these connections, I get that not everyone has like it can take time off of work or they don't have the money to get to a conference. But I mean, look at NG Houston, right? Like that's yeah. a meetup that you don't even that have was... to live in Houston to go to and attend. That's what I was Make just about friends. to say. Yeah. Right. Like, so I think if you don't have people, you got to get yourself some people. <laughs> yeah. You got to have some people. I, I think Googling can only get you so far. It can. And then at, yeah. at a certain point, you just need somebody to look, like have that human touch and be like, here's where you're missing logic, right? I don't <laughs> I've, either that or what you need to do is get your mom to go out and learn Angular. Uh-huh. Yeah. Uh, and, yeah. And you can ask your mom questions. Sit down. Yeah, That's actually the best suggestion probably. That would be the easiest. An intervention. Yeah. And be like, mom, what are you doing with your life? Because it's not Angular. Right? <laughs> exactly. That's what I did, man. Now look where we are. You it know what you can get me for <laughs> Mom, you know what you can get me for Christmas this year? If you can learn <laughs> Angular. I'm going to ask you questions all year long. All oh, year. <laughs> the gift that never stops giving. I am not asking my mom to learn Angular. I'm sorry. Why? <laughs> I'm going to go and ask mine right now. My mom is okay, retired, guys. living on the beach. She wants to. She doesn't want to Angular on the beach. Sorry. We are. We are kind of running out of time here. Sorry. Oh, Let's sorry. Keep it moving. Okay, so guys. okay. Question ten. How could a duck help you with your problem? Or, in Justin's case, a dog. How could a dog or a duck, yes, help you with your problem? I find you that could. people are better ducks, just saying. Even if they're like my sister, who's not in development at all. I yeah, think but that's what deal. I don't think people understand what the, the idea of what a duck is. I um, think everyone knows what a duck is. <laughs> <laughs> in this context, in this context. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. The most you. Fun. I'm gonna stop distracting wow. you guys. <laughs> that was awesome, Melissa. I'm sorry. I don't mean to interrupt you, but that was <laughs> that was pretty good. I can't even be mad at that. All right. Okay. The so concept of a rubber duck is that better? <laughs> why, don't you, why don't you explain it, Sam, in case anybody is not familiar? Okay. So the rubber duck debugging technique is there's a link in it in my article that takes you to another article and it explains <laughs> in great detail what rubber ducking is and why it helps. So when you explain the issue to a rubber duck or a sister or a mother or a dog, sometimes in the or process, my husband. yeah, or that, they, by talking through the problem, you can find the error. And sometimes this is not always the case. You still need those connections. But sometimes a rubber duck can take the place of friends. You know, so. I was talking to so I first came to the, <laughs> the rubber duck can be your friend. I was talking yeah, to my first entered development, and I this was when I first realized, completely serious, <laughs> that not everyone talks to themselves out loud. I talk to myself during the day, like legitimately. Like 100% my entire life, I've always been like, well, I don't know, Alyssa, what do you think? Like. <laughs> Always. So what, what I, I, just, do? I think I, know, right? I think this was like 
introverted, maybe like Dev's way of being like, you can just talk to this inanimate object, tell it your woes, and maybe like solve your problem that way. So I just can't Avoid believe that not everyone is humans. already asking all like <laughs> the air. <laughs> yeah, so that is rubber ducking, rubber duck debugging, and it is very useful. My mom has a duck on her desk at all times, and it's it's a very nice duck. Do you ever catch I her talking judges. to it though, or is she just is it just for aesthetics? Um, well, I've never actually caught her talking to the duck, but if you are at Starbucks and you want to bring, if you work at Starbucks and or not like actually work at Starbucks, but if you have your laptop and you are, you know, sitting at a table in Starbucks and working, uh-huh. and you bring your rubber duck with you, sometimes it would be good to either write the problem down on a piece of paper or just <laughs> say it in your head if you don't, if you like are an extra Sam, introvert. Are you saying like you're not advocating talking to yourself in public? <laughs> no, I am for sure saying talk to yourself in public, but. If you know that doesn't, if you're not very comfortable with that, if you're not um, at that level of self awesomeness, you can <laughs> either write it down or you can just say it in your head and just look, just stare at the duck while you think it in your head. So people yeah. will just see you staring longingly at a duck instead of talking to the duck. <laughs> so that's my daughter does not take herself too seriously. I love it. Oh, Mike, can I will see our faces? Talk to the duck. Because I hope so. Mike, your face is awesome. <laughs> Well, I would actually, if I were sitting at Starbucks, I would talk to the person next to me. I don't care what they're doing. I would help them. Yeah. I would make them help me solve my problem. I've done this is that why before. she's not allowed to go to Starbucks, you guys. She's been 87. <laughs> That's <laughs> true. That's why I'm homeschooled. I don't get out much. Oh, <laughs> question question 11. 11. We are almost out of time. Okay, question 11. What is the number one thing you can do to keep yourself interested in the tasks that you are teaching yourself? And this definitely can be debated, but this is just my... The first, like, the number one thing I do to make sure that I am being as productive as possible. When Chopsticks. Learning something. Work on something you're passionate about. Ding, 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 ding. Yay. I think that Alyssa just gets all the points this week. <laughs> yeah. I told you I would kill Mike at speed reading. <laughs> <laughs> Dominated. Well, now we know who's cheating. <laughs> <laughs> so work on something you are passionate about this will keep you interested this will keep you excited when you get stuck when you are you know when there's a barrier having something that you're interested in will keep you will it will help you keep going and it will make Even you if not want to like a dating site for llamas right whatever it is that has to keep you going yeah That's work on you something you're on. passionate about because if you work on something you're passionate about, you want to get better. You want to keep learning, and that is the goal. So question number 12, what is the Pomodoro technique? Oh, I love the Pomodoro technique. It's all about <laughs> tomatoes. <laughs> we no, should see the like, faces. Like Y'all's part, faces are great. I Dude, can't that's see part of the face. reason I have this notebook out, because like during Pomodoro sessions, because I get so distracted so easily, I would write down the distraction. I'm not even kidding. Even if it was like there was like a, a ticking clock at one point that was bothering me. So every single time the ticking clock bothered me, I'd like make a note, like a mark on the piece of paper. And then like for some reason that allowed me to let the distraction go and then get back to the thing I was focusing on. Or sometimes, you know, during like one dev task, you run into another dev task, like during a Pomodoro session. And you're like, no, no, no. Alyssa, we're doing this during this, you know, 25 minute chunk or whatever. So right? yes, I love. So Pomodoro. what, Alyssa, what is the Pomodoro technique, though? It's like this guy who had a tomato timer, and he totally, like, set that tomato timer and was like, I'm going to focus on my work during this tomato timer. And then he gave himself, like, a five-minute break in between each, like, I don't know, 25-minute chunk. I think there are different chunks that people accept as Pomodoro, but uh, I think it's, like, 25 to 5 or something, or 20 to 5 or something. What's your ratio? I think- 25 minutes. I do 25 minutes and then five minute breaks. And then after each third Pomodoro, I take a, uh-huh. a longer, a 15 minute break. And actually okay. there are multi- there's a Pomodoro app for the Mac that will just sit up there in your, in your uh, task bar. But and, you're and supposed to use a tomato timer. <laughs> well, I have an, I have an, uh, uh, you're also yeah, supposed to use app, a tomato that, timer app. Justin uses a dog. So <laughs> That's true. It's That's not a rubber duck, duck yeah. so I guess we can. I'll let it go. Okay. So my, my, dog, my, dog, tomato timers. my dog snores, 
And when the snoring level gets so loud, that's my timer. And then I yeah. got <laughs> to oh, yeah. When I hear my stomach growling, it's my yeah. break. No, but like legitimately, guys, I am not kidding. I have ADHD. I have struggled for my whole life with paying attention. And Pomodoro literally changed my work life. Like so, literally. So if you've never is. actually given it a try, you've heard about it and you're like, eh. Seriously, just give it one Pomodoro sesh, just one. And see how and do you guys find that it's that it's even harder to focus when you're doing something different like if I'm doing something that's pretty easy I can work uninterrupted for hours but if I'm doing something that it's really hard for me I then I get distracted so, like anything will distract me yeah and I'll get up and go oh look I have to pet the cat right now you know yeah, yeah. or oh look a nap sounds amazing right about now. <laughs> So, the so that's when the technique. Pomodoro is even more helpful. When you really, you need to focus, you need to get this done, and it's just, it's hard to focus. Well, so. and you know, I honestly suggest, like, not just following the, okay, I'm going to work for 25 minutes and then take a five-minute break. But I really suggest, because this is the way I was taught it by a fellow dev, take out your notebook and say, what does Alyssa have to get done today? And you make just this, like, list, right? It doesn't even have to make sense to somebody else, just yourself. And then during that next 25 minute chunk, you pick out a couple of bullet points. And that really helped me because during the Pomodoro session, if I started it without that list, I'd be like, what am I doing today? Right? Like I'd waste 10 minutes right. of it trying to figure out the first bullet point. And that really always kept me on track because when I get distracted by like, oh, look at this cool GIF or something, right? I'd be like, what bullet point am I on? Right? So I really suggest the list in combination with your tomato clock. Like, it's a twofer. So it is and a way to pace yourself. Woohoo! Pacing. And bonus points if you get up out of your chair during the five yes. minute break. Yes. Oh, I thought that was like a requirement. I was told you have to yes. stand up. Is that not a requirement? Do you yeah. sit during your breaks? <laughs> no, you have to. You, we're just going to make that rule right up. now. You have to get okay. up. It is required for this Pomodoro to work. So have all the panelists on the show done Pomodoro at least once in their life? I have. No, not Oh much. my gosh, Mike! Nope. Ah! I just plug on through. <laughs> I, need to have I have a 24-hour okay. Pomodoro cycle. Oh my gosh. <laughs> I really, that was another thing too, because I like have been working from home for the last year and a half and I really struggled with feeling some days like I had done enough and the Pomodoro sessions, because I was bullet pointing out things, even if they're tasks, like I need to research how to do this thing kind of made me like realize how much time I was actually working, even if I wasn't writing code or like actually pushing up things. And so I don't know if you ever struggle with that, like even if you're not a work from home person, I think it's a really valuable thing just to validate to yourself. Oh yeah, look at how many things I am actually getting done, even if it's not writing code. So yeah. So question 13. What is the most important thing, in my opinion, in the article's opinion, to do in order to be successful in teaching yourself? Be stubborn. That was good. Man, Alyssa's on the ball today. You win the universe, Alyssa. She cheated. I do. I cheat. This win is under protest. Well, she did say at the beginning this game was to see if the panelists had read the article. Yes. I was just gonna, you know, be really mean to you guys and yell at you if you didn't get all my answers right. <laughs> it's a good thing Alyssa was here. Like, I want to know for quiet seriousness, how did you survive in college if you couldn't like take something and be quizzed on it ten minutes later? Like, how how did you survive? <laughs> I've I never studied ahead attention. of time. Oh, you're one of those. Yeah. Oh. Okay, sorry, my bad. My yep. bad. <laughs> really good thing with. This stuff that you know ties into all the things that we talked about here is the uh, the self reflection part of it, right? And all this stuff we talked about gives you material to help you self reflect. So after you go and you learn and you collect these notes and you've done these techniques and you figured out what works for you, what not, then self reflect and say, okay, how how was my progress happening on that? What what's more effective? Should I tweak this here and there? And and how can I learn even more effectively from the data that I've collected? And and what works for me and that sort of thing too. I love it. It's like learning about how you learn constantly. <laughs> yeah. And I think that stubborn thing for me, it speaks to when, it, like when I first started doing this and, and especially because I didn't have this awesome developer network that I have now, right? I didn't have this wonderful support system and I could go and ask people if they'll pair with me. 
I didn't have anybody to pair with. And it was really discouraging. And there were a couple of times that I was like, hey, maybe I need a new career because I, I like I, I would get so frustrated. I'm like, I'm just not smart enough to be a developer. Right. And I had days where I felt like that. And then it, and, and what you have to do, though, is push through that, because on the other side of it, like I would spend a couple of days going, I need a new job. I can't do this. I'm just I'm an idiot. But then as soon as my code worked, I was like, oh, yeah, I'm awesome. I'm a rock star. And it was so so you have those peaks and valleys, especially if you're a girl. I don't know if that's a guy thing or a girl thing. But I, but I think that's the important thing with being stubborn is you have to push through that because if you are going to have days where you feel like you can't do this. And then once you push through it, you get the you get the res reward of. I just I hope I don't have star. days where I don't have that. <laughs> Wait, you don't have what? I hope to have days where I don't feel like I'm a failure and that I'm not doing things right. Wait, so you haven't got to those like rock star moments where you feel like you're on top of the coding world? Yeah, 30 seconds here, 15 seconds there. <laughs> what you reading, Shorty? Oh, no, it's a physical book again. Oh, so, so I was a just consulting book. out of my physical. I was Googling this hard copy that I've got here. Or some you were, sort of design patterns, you know, showing how you see, I wanted to back say, in the olden days. I wanted to say, did you buy the book on Amazon? Uh, no, I actually got this puppy at a bookstore locally years ago. <laughs> I take um, back everything I ever said. <laughs> I used to spend oh. a lot of money at Barnes and Noble, you guys. She like did. a lot, like oh, a did you did you ride a horse to get to the bookstore? Yeah, yeah, it was actually a, a buggy with, with rain. It uphill in the rain. <laughs> yes. It was actually a, across the Atlantic, so I had to charter a, a boat. And ah. yeah, it was a long journey. It like, took me you four can't months use to get there. Anything with electronics when you're <laughs> in a book. There's a steamboat. You, steam you can't even use a car to get to Barnes and Noble. Like, nothing. You can't Sam, here's a blast from the past. When you when you uh, it was just a couple of years ago before you started doing Angular, I got the NG book in the mail and I was super excited. And you called me a nerd for getting excited over. A book. I still think you're a nerd. I stand by that statement. <laughs> yeah. You're probably right, dude. Nerd is too cool. I don't know what you're pouting about, Bonnie. I like, caught her last crazy. night at twelve. Finally, I've been waiting weeks, you guys, to catch her awake in the middle of the night. I have been waiting. Oh, I was excited. I was like, I'm, I'm going to catch her one day working at night, and I'm going to give it to her. Because she's caught she me. When I, was, when I was little, I, uh, I, sometimes I would just stay up late, and she would, she would yell at me and say, we sleep at night in this house. And she would say, now I'm going to have to get up in the middle of the night and check on you and make sure you're asleep. Oh, and she was watching TV, you guys, in the middle of the night. Like, this is different. Plus, I was, was being like nine I was doing. I, I'm parenting as my job, <laughs> but the, but it's it, do as I say, not as I do, Sam. So I woke up. I didn't wake up last night. I got home from babysitting pretty late, and I went downstairs to refill my water. And she was working, and I was like, yes. yes. She, she the moment me. I've been she waiting came running for. Over. She's like, you're so busted. What are you doing? I'm like, GraphQL. <laughs> GraphQL. <laughs> Uh, oh my I goodness, I seriously got to want a gif of this with like Sam busting her mom, what are you doing? And it's like really late and she's like, Graf, like you went in this house. Yeah. It was, it was a great was moment. Yeah. It was All very right. funny. Well, I guess we're at the top of the hour, better put a bow on this thing. So uh, let's uh, do, hey, let's do a hybrid of picks and random things. So if you have a pick, we could do a pick. If you have a random thing, you can say a random thing. Uh, we'll kind of mix and match the two. So for everybody who didn't watch our episode last week with Aisha Gold, she suggested that we do random, just say something random at the end of the show. And that worked out pretty good because we had to call these random facts. But um, you can do either one. So let's just uh, roll down the list and see what everybody's got. Alyssa, do you have something you'd like to say? Yeah, I always have something random, always. I don't have a pick, but I have something random. So if you use these like nail drying drops that you can buy at the store to dry your nails instantly. It's like kind of a, what's the thing? Not a catch 22. I don't know the word, but basically it's bad in a way because then it makes you have this like false confidence that your nails are dry and then you'll start touching things. So, you know, moral of the story, if you use nail drying drops, you still have to let them dry girls and guys. I shouldn't be. And guys, I, I don't, yeah. I don't, I reject that. What's the, then what I, I want them to be instant. <laughs> I guess what one could ask what is the point of using it. I think it speeds it up a little bit. 
I want instant. Yes. When, I, when it says instant, I want instant. <laughs> nice. All right, Bonnie, what do you got? Uh, I have two, but I'll make it really quick. So uh, one, I want to remind everybody that Denny is doing uh, session four of his Angular JS upgrade series tonight. Uh, so tune in for that 30 p.m. Central Time over on NG Houston. And also, I found something completely random this morning. Uh, there's some guy that I never heard of before, and his name is Manuel Boudreau, I guess. If I, I'm probably butchering that. I don't think he's Cajun. Um, but he, he did a modern JS cheat sheet that I saw, and I think Rob uh, Helgeson just uh, liked it or retweeted it this morning, and I, and I looked through it, and it was actually really good. And I wish that I had that uh, when I first started learning, but I would actually use that. So, so go look, check out that modern JS cheat sheet, and you might want to bookmark it because it's kind of amazing. And I don't know who this Manuel guy is, but I, I thought he put a lot of work into it, and it was really nice, so I followed him on Twitter. Nice. Mike? I've got a real easy, small, quick pick. Again, going to VS Code. Uh, I found a new keyboard shortcut today. Some uh, VS Code tweeted out an update to their um, cheat sheet for keyboard shortcuts. But Command Shift T uh, in Chrome, if you close down a tab, it'll it'll reopen that tab or a group of tabs. Same thing yeah. in VS Code. If you close a tab uh, or uh, an editor window, it's I like, oh, I want to change something else in that file. Command Shift T, bring it right back up. Everything. Does that? Is that not true? I did not know that. I knew it for Chrome, but I didn't. I remember I was so happy the day I learned that about. Chrome. I just started using it like on Atom and other like. I think does Terminal actually do it too? Let me try it. I'm gonna try it. Everybody right. opens VS Code now. <laughs> no, Terminal That's does not do it. At least with that one. So yeah, cool. VS Code I, does it too. I, I that was the pick. I know. <laughs> uh, that, was a, that was a popular pick. That was a good one. All right, Justin. Uh, my my pick is I got my autonomous smart desk, uh, my standing desk. Oh, so I ordered that thing and I didn't got happen. it. I, picks, uh, I got something better let's for you. See. I'm gonna hit, I'm gonna hit some let's switches right now. Yeah. All right, so you're gonna, gonna hit, hit some switches. switches. Here we go. I'm okay. so jealous. All right, all right, so I don't know if it'll pick up the audio. Hopefully it won't because it's be like quiet, really, really so. quiet. So everybody be quiet and we'll see if you can hear it going. But uh, here we go. Yes. How's the weather up there? <laughs> it's 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 a little thinner air up here. I think I might get a nosebleed. I don't know. So what? Uh, so did you bad. hear anything? Did you did no. you hear? No, no, no we didn't hear anything. No. Oh, but I am so glorious. jealous. I want that. This thing's like uh, stealth mode. Which one yeah, did you get? Like what's the so top the, look like? I got the smart desk two. Um, okay. I got all black, so it's like a black shiny. Ooh. Ooh. Oh, it's like black one. It looks so it's kind nice. of like shiny, right? I'm so jealous. Okay, now here it, it kind of picks up scratches easily, so that's why you saw I, I had to throw my mouse pad back down. I didn't have a mouse pad on my other desk. Like it's, it's actually of, scratching the wood. Yeah, it looks like real little fine scratches that are showing up on there. No, well, because it's all like hard. I don't know plastic. Metal, metal, I don't know what it is, but um, can you like buff them off, finish. or are they like there? Well, my guess is you probably can because I kind of see them everywhere. It's it's not too bad, but um, that's one thing. So and then they have different okay. material that you can get for the top. So um, they have a walnut one. Walnut, I was but, looking for oh, that. Yeah, the walnut. You, you that's the one I wanted. Ah. And check this well, out. It costs way more though. Okay, so check <laughs> this out. You can, you can also get just the legs and the mechanics, um, but I could take. The, this top off, so I got the one with the with the desk and everything. But I could take this off and replace the top, and and still have the same thing. So you could actually customize it with your own desk. Surface. I have a standing uh, desk from IKEA that's a manual hand crank. <laughs> for your Kia? I really want, and honestly, Justin, I was really excited because I was IKEA. shopping for one of those not that long ago, and the one that you tweeted out was actually pretty affordable. So. Yeah, I yeah. think I want I want to be just like you and get one and follow. Everyone wants to be just like him. It's not fair. <laughs> so, so, so I live in California and they are located in California. So I got it like in a day and a half. So oh my it probably takes longer to ship other places, but it was like, yeah, it was like my birthday or something. I'm like, it's already here. And so, yeah, it's pretty cool. So that's my pick. Um, Love it. Yep. Love uh, it. Okay. This Sam. was so fun. Do you have any picks, Sam? I or do. You think we'll out, or? I have. Uh, I have a random and a pick. So my pick is Thought Room Angular Masterclass. Highly recommend. It was awesome. Like I said, I feel like I have 
upgraded a lot in my developer status. Still a junior developer, but I feel like a really great junior developer. <laughs> so, Thought Ram is my pick, and my random is a joke. Just to end this on a very great note, what state has the smallest soft drinks? I Minnesota. Know. Yes! Oh, nice, nice. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you Minnesota. I like that That's all I got. Minnesota. Oh, I love it. <laughs> All right, Sam. Well, thanks a ton for being our guest today, for coming on, for preparing the material, for taking the time to share this stuff with us. It was really great. Um, I think really informative and, and inspiring too. So thank you very much for taking the time and doing that. Appreciate thank it. Thank you for having me. Yes. And we got to uh, everybody look forward to it. So you're talking in Angular Mix, uh, which is coming up in like two weeks, I think. Yes. Um, anywhere else? Um, in G Atlanta, in uh, Georgia. January, That's right? in January, yes. And we are definitely putting in, uh, we're submitting papers for NG Comp, so we're going to cross our fingers. Yes, and we'll for we sure. Definitely. That's kind of where it all started for us, NG Comp. Very we'll awesome. Be there. Very awesome. And you can occasionally be seen on NG Houston's meetups as well, right? Is that correct? Yes, last week, right. actually. All right, well, thanks again. Really appreciate it. Uh, thanks for your time. And I think it was a great show, so everybody enjoyed it. Uh, we are out of here. We will catch you next week. Later, everyone.